Hey, it's Fan Mail Friday, and we have breaking news about David Fletcher and Jared Walsh. So let's get to it. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Spotify, Sirius XM, by searching Locked On Angels, and of course, Apple Podcasts. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started hey thanks for being here for this episode of locked on angels where it's your team every day you've got the fresh brothers here with you aka the super halo bros my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john mike the angels have had enough players on the il this season we didn't need you to go on the il <laughs> as well with migraines are you feeling better today feeling much better thanks for the love i got a lot of really good compliments and also got a lot of really good remedies in the comments on yes. youtube yesterday so locked on everydayers you're my heroes thank you except so much. for it's the guy who back. said take a sudafed like that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how migraines work oh uh whoops i took one yeah, no <laughs> you hadn't thought of that did you hey uh on today's show it is a fan mail friday we're getting to all your questions don't forget that on monday we'll be recapping the entire tiger series as the halos are back home at the big a this weekend they're playing them tonight of course, and we're going to be recapping that entire series on Monday. Mike, we had some breaking news. Speaking of Fan Mail Friday, uh, Jared Walsh and David Fletcher were selected and uh, brought back to the 40-man roster. Of course, this came after a question from Roger Lord on Twitter. He said, can you tell us what the heck is going on with (laughs) David Fletcher? (laughs) Why hasn't he been pulled up more often? His numbers in the minors show he belongs in the majors. Well, again, On Thursday, LA Angels PR tweeted that David Fletcher and Jared Walsh had their contracts selected, which means they are back on the 40-man roster. Remember, they were both DFA'd this season. Yep. In their place, Luis Renjifa went on the 60-day injured list because of the torn bicep, and Gerardo Reyes was DFA'd. So, Mike, what has been up with David Fletcher not playing with the Halos so much this season? Johnny, pure and simple contract manipulation right yes. that's exactly what's going on here david fletcher had to reach a specific number of games before his salary was guaranteed with five years of service time so uh, when they needed him off the 40 man they did move him off without uh, the risk of him refusing a minor league uh, assignment and and because he needed to stay with the org in order to earn guaranteed money he had a uh, 25 days until he hit the 20 or the five year service time uh, but they are there are less than 25 games left or 25 days left in the season. So that's why they brought him back up. So we'll get to see him, which is really exciting. I'm not sure, sure how much he'll get to play because Kyron Paris is up, and I think they want to see Paris. And no, Nero. Paris, Paris is down, and Jordan Adams went down as well. Oh, that's well. right. They sent yeah, him down yeah, too. Yeah, so okay, right, so I guess he is going to be playing. We'll see if he's in the starting lineup today then against the Tigers. Yeah, it's interesting because they, they really – had the chance to move David Fletcher up and off the 40 man without him saying like, you know what? I'm done because he has to stay with the angels in order to hit that five years of service time. Yeah. If he had hit five years of service time, when a player hits that five years, they can refuse uh, to go to the minors and elect free agency. Then somebody else would scoop him up. Now, the fact that he's been removed from the 40 man roster and nobody did pick him up yeah kind of indicates how the rest of the league might view him but again he also has not an expensive contract but a, a contract nonetheless that yeah. other teams might not be so appealed toward uh, picking up. That does seem to be the trend with Halos that get DFA'd or or taken off the 40-man. No other teams kind of go after them. I can understand with Fletch with his contract, but I wonder if that says something about who this guy is and how the Angels view him and how Angel fans view him versus how the league views him. And it'll be interesting to see what he does in the next, what, I think, what, 16, 15 games that we have right. left. And if that actually impacts what he does next year if he's even around next year somebody on youtube said why aren't walsh and fletcher up with the team and i said well they're probably just trying to give an extended look to paris and jordan adams because they've kind of hit their ceiling in the minor leagues and this person said you know do they need more development i said them being up in the majors is kind of the perfect opportunity to get them to develop because yeah they've done all the developing they can in the minors 
And then I responded after this news broke. I said, shows what I know because now <laughs> Walsh and Fletcher are back up in yeah. the majors. So. I totally forgot about it too. And then when you mentioned it, it was like, oh yeah, they're not there. So it does, quite honestly, it doesn't make sense to me why they're not up on the major league roster because what can they prove in the minor leagues anyway? And I want to see what Paris can do. And I think what we've seen from him so far has been pretty exciting. Jordan Adams still looks a bit lost, but there isn't much more that he can do in AAA. That's true. Hey, Mike, we got our first voicemail of the day. Let's go. Hey, this is Arthur Ogden from Grass Pass, Oregon. I was just thinking, wouldn't it be nice if the Angels would spend all that money on free agents on actual pitchers instead of hitters, and that might have changed everything? Also, uh, hey, I really enjoy your show, and I really appreciate you being there because – Luckily, this year, the Angels got all the way to football season before I dropped out. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Arthur Ogden <laughs> in Grants Pass, Oregon. Hey, that's where Brandon Drury's from. And, Mike, you and I have been to Grants Pass before when we, yes, we have. used to live in Oregon. Uh, he brought up an interesting point about wouldn't it have been nice if the Angels spent money on pitching this past offseason rather than picking up all the hitters and position players that they did. I feel like there's a little bit of hindsight with that thought just because uh you know the rotation wasn't what it was at the end of last season i mean they had shohei as their ace detmers and sandoval should have been a lot better than they were this season it did not carry over into 2023 that was something that they were probably expecting but let's review really fast what the angels did do over the offseason they signed brandon drury i think that was a necessary signing they needed another bat they traded for Hunter Renfro and Gio Rochella, and they signed Brett Phillips. Pitching side, pitching wise, they signed Tyler Anderson, Matt Moore, and Carlos Estevez to those deals. Uh, the offseason issue they had after 2022 was depth because whenever there was an injury, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel on the waiver wire to replace that player. So I feel like Perry Manassian went out and addressed the issue in terms of depth. They needed to reinforce all the injuries that they expected to have. Funny enough, they had more injuries this season and right. went through all of their depth pieces as well. When Gio Rochella broke his pelvis, they had a fel- pelvis fracture. That's one of your depth pieces going on the IL for the remainder of the season. Mike, I feel like going into this offseason, because of what's happened with Detmers and Sandoval and the rotation, and whether they get Otani back or not, he's not going to be pitching. I think pitching is going to need to be addressed this offseason. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And I think why it feels like it wasn't addressed is because of the items you mentioned, but also the angels could have used one more starting pitcher. And we've talked about that. I think Nate Eovaldi was somebody that we would have loved to have seen. And and I know that he struggles with injuries and was on the IL for a bit with the Rangers, but he's having a really fantastic season. And who was Mm -hmm. the pitcher Johnny that signed with the Padres that I think came from maybe St. Louis. I can't remember his name. It'll, it'll come to me, but he's pitching really, really well with the Padres as well. And so I, I just think that the angels needed one more arm. We were also concerned in the off season about all of the lefties in this starting rotation. And I think that that has something to do with why there was uh, maybe a lack of effectiveness. I think left-handed right-handed pitchers having a good mix is, is really beneficial, even though, you really have some good lefty pitchers. They have regressed a bit, but I think it's good to have uh, a couple of right-handers and a couple of left-handers in your rotation and mix and match them. So mm-hmm. I think that that may be what our friend is talking about and and mentioning why it feels like maybe the pitching didn't really do what it was supposed to do. We could have gotten one more pitcher, and that I think is where the gap really is and what we're feeling. The pitcher you're talking about who went to San Diego was somebody that I wanted on my GM list, and darn it, I'm trying to find. <laughs> uh, I don't have it right here off the yeah. top of my head, but uh, I knew that I wanted him, and I'm sure that he's uh, he's uh, somebody we could have used. Hey, the Angels right. are back at it tonight playing the Tigers, 6.38 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on SiriusXM of the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Coming up on Locked on Angels, what's the best solution next year for the Halos at third base? Well, we're going to talk about it and give you our suggestions coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by Jace Medical. Modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are very fragile. Things like pandemics and natural disasters and foreign travel can cut you off from the treatment that you desperately need 
That's why Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form and one of their board certified physicians will review what you filled out and determine whether medications are safe and appropriate for you. Then they send their prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your Jace order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. And not only that, you can send, they send it to a physician and you can get a message for answers, for treatment, related questions, anything that you need at any time. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. That's fun to say. Uh, you can save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 by using our promo code locked on at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J A S medical.com. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Don't forget that the Angels are back at it tonight against the Tigers, 638 Pacific Time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Mike, I found it. Michael Waka. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> so here's how I was trying to remember it. It's, I'm, it's tied to the Muppets somehow. How do I know that? Waka, 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 right? Okay, go ahead. There you Continue. go. Perfect. <laughs> Mike, uh, one of my favorite follows on Twitter had a question for us. Retire Salmon 15 on Twitter said, both Brandon Drury and Carlos Estevez have one year left on their deals. Hmm. Do you think the Halos try to trade either of them this off season? Let me talk about Brandon Drury yeah. just a little bit. Yes, he does have one year left. His trade value would be at an all-time high I think this so. off season, especially after the season he's had yes. with the Angels. He's been a bright spot in a very dark season. Even with the month that he missed, he has still put together a really solid season being a primary second baseman as well. And while he can play third base, he hasn't done that yet with the Angels this year. And so depending on how they feel about Rendon and his ability to even play next year, maybe they give Drury a shot over there, but I can't see him moving over there because if Drury's not at second, I'm not really sure what they do. I know that we talked about mm. Kyron Paris maybe being up the middle next season, but at this point, I'm not sure that he's quite ready. It also depends on if the Angels feel like they're going to try to be competitive again and yeah. field a competitive team or if they're going to let the young kids play. But uh, that's Drury. Why don't you talk about Estevez? Yeah, he wasn't really on anybody's radar in the offseason. No, I, I don't think so. I remember mm -hmm. even when they traded for him, I think you and I were both kind of like, wait. Who well, that, that was a, that was a signing. And, and yeah. so he was a free agent for the first time since he uh, came up as a Rocky. Um, but yeah, nobody really was paying attention to that guy. Yeah. Uh, Perry and the front office, to their credit, they, they did identify him as a potential closer. There wasn't a lot of conversation on if he was going to be the closer or not. I know mm -hmm. that there were some questions about his ability to close because in spring training, he really was getting hit hard. And then he went out and, and ripped off what, like 25 in a row, I think 26 in a row, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And right now he's 30 of 33, if mm -hmm. I'm, if my numbers are right. And, and those three blown saves were huge games and so they're fresh in our hearts which is yeah. why i think we're a bit like eh, is could he be the closer could he not be the closer but if he's the guy he was in the first half there's a lot of potential there for him he really has been i think a bright spot in a really down season but the question john from our friend retire salmon 15 was should the angels trade these guys you mentioned brandon drury being on the trade market and if people would want him. I think because of his contract and because of his flexibility and the way that he can play the infield, even maybe play some outfield and that he can hit. I think he would be a great trade piece. Estevez, on the other hand, I don't know. And I don't know if you would want to trade him. I think Carlos could be somebody that you could really have a part of a established bullpen. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not being the closer. I don't think that he shouldn't be the closer, but I think that he actually could be a seven eight or nine inning guy and, and really help this bullpen find its footing. Uh, going back to, to Drury, I think this team needs him and mm. whether they're competitive or not, I think this team needs him. Mm. I think that Perry Manassian is a, I want MLB ready players. And I don't think that guys like Kyron Paris and Jordan Adams are the guys that Perry's going to run with. Mm. I think Perry's going to run with his guys, right? Mm. I think he's going to run with his Nettos and his Nolan Shauna Wells and his Logan O'Hoppies. I think he's going to need to be really, really confident that these guys are major league ready and can contribute. 
and move forward with them. And if there's questions about them, I can see him again, making the Gio Urshela trade or the Hunter Renfro trade this off season. With Estevez too. I mean, the angels are always a better team when they have a true established closer because before Estevez was Rysel Iglesias. And yeah. before that, we didn't have a true established closer since Houston Street. And that was the last time the Angels were good. And yeah. so if you have a guy that you know is going to get the ball in the ninth inning, granted, you know, uh, they try not to run him out there every single day. They do, you know, one day, two days, and then give him an off day. Um, I think the Angels are better with a true closer. And so it really depends on if they're going to try to compete next season. But if the Angels decided to trade them, I think they would both net some really great pieces back. I just don't know. Man, I think this offseason is is so wide open, Mike. And yeah. speaking of that, Alec Al Eric Alejandro on Twitter, he said this, considering Perry has one more year and Phil is not his pick, he got the one-year deal due to the once-upon-a-time sale of the team. <laughs> Does the team extend Perry and give him manager choice, and or do they keep him on his current contract? hire a new GM and then fire Perry after a bad season. Not that I want Perry fired. I'm just thinking of a possible scapegoat. If things are bad next season, which I'm expecting they will be. Well, Perry's got one more year on this current deal. I don't know if they make a change there this off season. And we'll get into a question that kind of addresses that in a second, but Perry has one more year on his contract. I'd assume they let him hire a manager of his choice for next year. We've seen managers roll over through GMs before. I mean, Sosha to Epler, um, Joe Madden to Perry, that sort of thing. We've, we've seen this before where a GM's tenure comes to an end and the manager sticks with the team. And that's often what we attribute to a lot of the disconnect in the organization. Yeah. So if a new manager got a three-year deal, then I, it wouldn't be unprecedented if they managed to stay and and Perry went although they could give a manager a one-year deal but that's just not a very appealing offer especially when there's so many guys out there like Walt Weiss for example if somebody wanted Walt Weiss he's not going to come to the Angels for one year he's going to go to the right. Yankees for five years you know what right. I'm saying yeah and so unless it's like a first-time manager who really wants to manage I can't see a one-year deal being very appealing to to anybody really no not at all I, I i do think that we do have to pump the brakes on this organization when it comes to like this being an appealing job i know the narrative out there is like oh there's nothing really appealing about coming to the angels i think if you're a good leader i think you're excited about it because as we've said of before course. about otani like staying is putting your fingerprints on this organization and leading them to glory would be something that you would love to put down on your resume and i think the last example of this and the Angels not being that really appealing kind of narrative was when they hired Mike Sosha and yeah. he came. Like Mike Sosha was a young manager. He was somebody that hadn't really managed in the major, hadn't managed in the major leagues at all, had some minor league experience. And he came over and what did he do? He was able to put his fingerprints on this organization and be our Tommy Lasorda, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that there is some incentive to come over. I just don't think the incentive is a one year deal. Right. I think the incentive is a lot longer than that. If they go with a one year deal, Johnny, then I think it should be Ray Montgomery. I think it should be somebody already mm. in the already in the dugout, Benji Gill, somebody like sure. that. I don't yeah. think that they need to go and find somebody. Why not just run with who you have there? I just don't, I just don't think, and we're going to get to it in a minute, but I just don't think Phil should stay at all. No, absolutely not. Charlie Hess on Twitter asked us, what are the chances the front office and coaching staff get cleaned out after, or even if Artie stays? And, and there's been multiple reports, Mike, from baseball media that things are not so great in the Angels front office. So I, like I said, it's, it's a, full, wide open, uncertain off season. Uh, and in terms of things that I think you and I can agree on that we'd like to happen, we'd like to see Perry see out the rest of his contract, his yeah. one year deal. Cause we like what he's done with the minors. We like the players he's drafted. We'd like uh, the, the people he's called up. Uh, the record's not great. I don't know if you can attribute that to Perry necessarily, uh, but at the same time, he's the one signing players and making decisions uh, with Artie's approval, of course. I think Phil Nevin needs to go. I think Matt Wise needs to go. Maybe yeah. even Marcus Timms, because you and I know uh, personally a, a minor leaguer who got to work directly with Phil Plantier, our mm -hmm. assistant baseball or our assistant hitting coach 
And not only did he feel this way, but also the players he's played with said that Phil Plantier has changed their careers yeah. with the way that he's instructed as a hitting coach. So I feel like Perry should get the chance to pick his manager, especially in this last year, and then work with that manager to build out the coaching staff because that's the way structurally it should go. It should start at the top with the manager and work its way down. You know, for as much criticism as Marcus Timms gets, he was Phil's pick for hitting coach because they've worked together previously. And of all the things that have gone wrong this season, I think hitting, not situational hitting, not runners in scoring position, (laughs) but hitting overall has been kind of the one success that there's been this offseason. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. You can get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That's the best offer they can give you, and it's really a great deal because... NFL Sunday tickets. Awesome. Uh, Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can bet on everything from the spreads to the player props and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. That's FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Mike, we've got a few more questions for Fan Mail Friday, and I'm going to start with this one on Twitter. SC Halo on Twitter said, how do you go about setting the starting rotation next year from within free agency, trade. What do you think? I think that without Otani, the Angels have a chance to go back to a five-man rotation, which I think can maybe benefit some of these younger guys. Now, yeah. Otani's not going to pitch at all, so let's. I would love to see him come back, but we know he's not going to pitch at all next season. So they probably can just move to a five-man rotation no matter what. True. Right? They're going to need an ace. And I think there are a lot of names out there there that are like ace-like, like Aaron Nola, Blake Snell, Sonny Gray, names that we've talked about on this show. I think that they're going to need an ace. And, and then it would probably give them a rotation of something like this. There'd be an ace, and then Detmers, Sandoval, Anderson, and then Canning or Silseth. And I would even argue, John, that some of these young guys, like maybe a Detmers or Sandoval, and I can't believe I'm saying this, could actually be replaced with a Silseth hmm. and and because Silseth has proven to be somebody that can really go out and, and, and pitch and, and, and pitch really well. I don't think you take canning out of this rotation because no. canning has been really strong. So I think that the interchangeable parts are Detmers and Sandoval and dare I say, I don't think they would because of his contract. And, but dare I say, maybe even Tyler Anderson, maybe he can be a, it's kind of a swing man for hmm. this starting rotation, but The reality is, and you mentioned Matt Wise in our last segment, nothing changes unless coaching changes. Right. And that's going to be the huge thing for those young guys, in particular, Sandoval and Detmers. These these guys, they need some help. And then when Mm -hmm. it comes to like signing guys, guys on short deals who might be up for a trade aren't aren't very appealing. I, I think that that feels kind of like like a waste? Does it feel like hmm. a waste to you? I just, I looked it over and anybody who's on a short term deal who, you know, Hey, he's got one year left. Let's trade him. It's guys like, it's guys like Eovaldi. And yeah. It's guys like that who they're not going anywhere. They're, yeah. they're sticking with their team. And, and then anybody else who's on that sort of contract is not very appealing. Now the angels could go and try to get somebody, you know, a young starting pitcher, but then is that young starting pitcher that they traded for, an ace. Well, yeah, n- not necessarily. I mean, it's not somebody who's a veteran with experience and that sort of thing. It might be a good young starting pitcher, but as far as ace potential, it really comes down to the free agents that are out there. There's not many, Mike, uh, right. as far as the uh, free agency list goes there, there are good names on there, but they're going to be highly sought after uh, in the off season. Yeah. Jacob on Twitter said, what do you guys think the best solution at third base will be? I know we don't like talking about uh, no habla ingles, Anthony Rendon. Uh, (laughs) Jacob says needs to be DFA'd, but with Neto and Paris up the middle, possibly do they move Drury over to third, move Ward to third, move Walsh to third or sign a free agent and bring Moose back. What do you guys think? Mike, (laughs) they haven't tried Drury at third yet. Um, I'd be interested to see if they needed him there, but again, Going back to my earlier point, 
him at second base has been it's been working. I know he had a little bit of a rough patch at the beginning, but it's, it's worked so far. Here's a thought that I hadn't considered. And that's maybe they can let Jared Walsh be the third baseman. Maybe they can teach him to play third base and he can be a lefty power hitting third baseman. Mike, if they can teach Mark Trumbo how to do it and help Jared Weaver get a no hitter in 2012, then I think Jared Walsh, who's much more capable on the corners could do that as well he does throw left-handed though so that would actually probably Ah. uh, keep him from doing that now we could do it on mlb the show but they probably wouldn't do it in the major leagues at third base i'm trying to think like throwing across throwing up the line normally typically i you would you would only see uh, a left-handed thrower either at catcher yeah base or in the outfield so i don't know if they would move him over i i I wonder if the the ward piece would actually be something that might be good for the angels today. I mentioned this yesterday, Mike, mm-hmm. and, good. and him taking that fastball to the face. Uh, he's got to get over that. He's yeah. got to be able to put that in the back of his head, but if he's taking hard liners, line the drives, corner, yeah, yes. line drives at his face <laughs> at third or first, I, he's not going to want. And to your that. point, you know, when we've talked about his outfield defense, he was hesitant out there and I think he yeah. played it really safe. And so who knows how, how wild he would be at third base. I think guys like Urshela and Moustakis are worth considering coming back. Moose played mm-hmm. a great third base. I, I would love to see Urshela back, although he might be somebody that's highly coveted for other teams because he can play multiple positions. And, and then there's Louis Renhifo, Johnny. He could probably yeah. possibly settle there as well. Yeah, his best position is second base, according to the stats. But if you were to tell Luis, hey, you're playing third every day. You're there. Like teach him, teach him third base over yeah. the off season and make that uh, a priority. Mike, let's go to our last uh, voicemail of the day. I'm looking forward to this one and hearing your thoughts. Hey guys, this is Reggie calling from Fallbrook. Appreciate what you guys do. What I wanted to comment on is Taylor Ward. Although I don't necessarily miss his defensive play in the outfield, one of the things that I did enjoy about Taylor Ward is how his swing looked, uh, the beauty of his swing, which popped a question into my head in angels history in your opinion who had the most beautiful swing thanks guys reggie and fallbrook thanks for your question mike i'm gonna let you you're the angel historian around here because you've watched (laughs) the team for a long time who's your favorite pretty swing well i'm gonna give you a couple just to consider uh i can't leave rod carew out of that because Mm. rod had over 3,000 hits but rod had that really kind of funky batting stance where he would lean over and then kind of slap the ball Mm -hmm. i think the prettiest swing was two first basemen for the angels one of them is you know really mr halo and the other one could have been but then got traded away the first is wally joiner i love Mm. wally joiner's look pretty sweet left-handed swing uh jt snow though when he would get a hold of a ball yeah he had a great like launch angle and a great follow through and you always knew when he got it yeah and and i think that those are the swings i can think of initially i think garrett anderson would be on that list i think uh somebody like a tim sam i love tim sam and chili davis had a great batting stance who who would you say johnny look uh, as a as a angel baby you know i mean my fandoms started you know in the nineties. And, but I I think about not trout as a pretty swing, but like just a, a crazy swing, the way he gets to the ball, the way he shortens up, the way he turns, it's just like, how, how does he get the hits that he gets sometimes? And so for me, like just trout is not a pretty swing, but it's, it's a fascinating swing the way he's able to make contact the way he does. Hey, thanks for making locked on angels. Your first listen of the day. Angels play the tigers tonight at six 38 and you can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at locked on angels and at super halo bros on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, please get into our comments on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you there. The best way to get into conversation with us we'd love to hear your thoughts on any of today's discussion topics mike what do we have on deck for monday's show we're going to recap the tiger series we're counting down the days until the end of the season and so hopefully this could be a good weekend series for the halos i would love to see them climb at least back to 500 it'd be nice to see them work their way back so hopefully they can get some wins this weekend and we're going to break down every game on monday on locked on angels looking forward to this weekend we hope you have a great one and we'll see you back here on monday until then my name is john and that's my brother mike my name is mike and that's my brother john thanks for being here have a great weekend and we'll see you on monday hey i like your joe madden look today by the way (laughs) holy cow (laughs) 